All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise unto and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers, and peace and blessing and salutation to the hopeful lake out there pushing his word in truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here. Shalom to the hopeful lake, the believers, the listeners. Whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in you, how about your mouth shy? And what I want to get into today, all right, just dealing with how, you know, what we're witnessing amongst our people, you know, especially amongst, <clears throat> you know, um, our people that are in, you know, to this street culture, you know, thug culture, thought culture, whatever you want to call it, is a result, you know, of our people being integrated, you know, and pretty much being enchanted. You know, by this B system, all right, we're watching the results of it, you know, and it gets worse and worse, you know. That's why Yahweh Bashim Al Shai has a cutoff point, you know, for what our people, you know, is evolving into under this B system. That's why Yahweh Bashim Al Shai has an expiration date for this entire kingdom, you know, because you have a, um, you have a, uh, <laughs> pretty much a generation of Israelites. You know, they will only continue to get worse and worse if this is allowed, you know, to go on. You know, the, the, the mindset and the way of thinking and how dumbed down and, you know, just pretty much backwards, all right, our people have become, you know, within this society. And it's on display, you know, mainly, you see, within what they call street, you know, thug culture, all right, which, you know, these... You know, uh, 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 so class, high value men of our of, of our people, you know, that are higher ups, they're finished, they're through, you know. But what's the what's the thing that Esau markets the most? You know, is this culture where you know Jake is xing each other out. All right. Now, when you go to Proverbs twelve and twenty six, it says the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous being Israel. All right, because. We was we was made all right completely different all right from our neighbor which is speaking of Esau Edom it said but the ways of the wicked seduces them yeah because what happened our people have seen the prosperity of the wicked and those ways all right have seduced our people all right the energy that Esau Edom you know put forth in the earth you know has taken hold to the masses of our people and that's why I could never say it enough. You know, the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, we was pulled out of that darkness, man. You know, and brought into this marvelous light. You know, I might say that every day. <laughs> you see? Because, hey, we we would have been through, man. All right? Lord Scripture said, if the Lord had not left the remnant, we would have been in Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Finished. All right? So, I got a clip just to show you the mind frame, you know, of how our people think now. It doesn't even make sense. Showing you how bugged out and enchanted our people are. All right. So when you um when you go, <laughs> I want to play this clip real quick. It's a quick, you know. I just happen to watch it. You know, just to watch something, just to analyze. You know, niggas, man. You know, that was a hob got me on there pretty tough. Just analyzing niggas, man. You know, and um. I got this clip, and now sh this shows you a nigga mind. Like, we talk about it all the time, how niggas are at war with each other based on what side of town you was born on, all right? And how dumb can that be? You know, how can you, you know, be born into a war based on where your mother or your father, you know, or wherever your grandmother lived when you were born, all right? But this is a nigga doctrine, man, all right? So I'm going to let this play. Right 
So, based on, you know, <laughs> your birth location, all right, you were born into a war, all right? And this is a system that Esau Edom, you know, has made up, all right? He said, if you go across the street, so one street over, so if I'm happen to be born one street over from you, all right, when I get to the age, you know, 11, 12, 13, you know, it start off with, you know, fights and then, you know, eventually to, you know, gunplay. All right. We know how it go, you know, but just because I'm one street over. You see the logic and this is the glorified like niggas rap about streets, niggas get streets tattooed on them. Uh, you know, uh, they get clout. The nigga woman love the nigga with the most, you know, clout in the streets. And, you know, so. This way is glorified. Esau uh, snatched one of these niggas out of these neighborhoods and put the machine behind them and put them on tour. You know, number one selling album. Money bag, yo. You know, he's like, damn. You know? It's not even about talent anymore. It's about who can influence niggas, all right, to be the most degenerate, man. You see? So I'm going to just let y'all hear it again, all right, the, the logic. All right, <laughs> you know, nigga logic, man. Yeah, I remember being out here. So we know about the gang activity in Chicago. Is it the same here? Is it, is it like, you know? See, they, 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 they gang bang out there to like GDs, Vice Lords, BDs. Out here, it's more like hood bang. What side you from? Like, this the east side. You go across this street right here, that's the west side. We war with the west side. If you go across that bridge, we war with them. If you go down the field, yeah. we war with them. It's all of what's happening. It's all in the rage right here. Chauncey Malcolm X. Through. All right. Now, you might say, well, what did they have to do, you know, with Esau? Well, let's get a little history, man. All right. Let's see how Esau moved. Except Esau just does on a whole nother level. Now, when you go to First Maccabees, all right. Let's get First Maccabees chapter one. All right. Now this is First Maccabees one and sixteen. Now this is dealing with Antiochus. All right, Epiphanes, which was an ultra, was was a major nigga. All right, that came out of the Seleucid Empire. All right, the Edomite, you know, a Greek Edomite that came out of the Seleucid Empire. All right, and he had dominion, you know, mainly you know in the region of Syria. All right, but li listen, listen to his logic. All right, because what you have is you had you had um Ptolemy ruling in Egypt. All right, then you had um you know um Antiochus, you know, mainly ruling in in Syria, you know, and then you had you know Cassandra, all right, and Lachamasis, which was uh the other two generals that was in power. So each of these generals pretty much had their own. You know, um, realm that they was ruling over. You're in rulership, people paying tribute to you, you're in power, you pretty much you're good. You see? So let's get the mind frame, all right, of how a nigga think. This is first Maccabees one and sixteen. It says, Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt that he might have dominion over two realms so he's like look i'm gonna establish where i'm at you know i'm gonna go invade my brother because that's a that was a that was his fellow edomite his brother was in you know rulership in egypt the totem all right they come from different lineages all right according to their fathers but they were both edomites so he's like look i want to rule over two realms just because like what niggas say in the movie niggas want to be the man just because b you see, but this energy comes from Esau. All right. It says, wherefore he entered into Egypt with a great multitude with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy and made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled and many were wounded to death. Thus, they got strong cities in the land of Egypt and he took the spoils thereof. You see. And he took the spoils thereof. So Antiochus invaded Egypt just because. All right. Just so he can have another block. All right. It was just on the whole another level. You see. 
<laughs> well, that energy comes from Esau, man. All right. Let's see if I can get the other one. When? Let me see. Yep. Now, this is 1 Maccabees 6 and 1. It says, about that time, King Antiochus, traveling through the high countries, heard say that uh, Elamias in the country of Persia was a city greatly renowned for riches, silver, and gold. Yeah, so it came, you know, he heard <laughs> through the grapevine that this city in Persia was uh, renowned for, for riches and gold. All right? So what is he thinking? I finna hit a lick. You see? I'm about to hit a lick. All right? And it says, and that there was in it a very rich temple wherein were coverings of gold and breastplates and shields, which Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian king, who reigned first among the Grecian, had left there. Wherefore, he came and sought to take the city and spoil it, but was not able to because they of the city having uh having had warning thereof rose up against him in battle so he fled and departed thence with great heaviness and returned all right to babylon so this man heard about someone having all right <laughs> riches in his mind like I, I i need to take that you know that jack boy mentality Esau, this this is East. The we when we see niggas, all right, these are nothing but all right micro Edomites, man. Nigger culture is nothing but micro Edomites. All right, Esau come in this energy, man. We didn't move like that. You see, you had even a, a, a instance in um um uh, um when King David. Tried to buy, you know, a piece of land, you know, from an Israelite man. The man was going to give it to him. He like, you the king. You know, I can't charge you. But David insisted that he paid him for it, man. You see? We didn't come in that energy, man. This is an Edomite energy that's on Jake that we're seeing, man. You see? <laughs> so, let's go back. Get these couple precepts. Um, let's get Isaiah 51 alright this is Isaiah 51 and 20 it says thy sons have fainted they lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in their net they are full of the fury of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, the rebuke of thy power yeah see the most I put us in these situations all right, and these circumstances based on our disobedience. And our people, all right, that refuse to turn to Yahweh by Shem Shai are what, man, calling this net. And them trying to get out has made them a wild animal, you know, because Jake is trying to get from under these circumstances. And they become what? Animals, man. You know, because what, the, what did Jake say? I'm a product of my environment. The streets made me. You see? Jake trying to get out them circumstances has become animals, man. You know, has become liking <laughs> unto this beast, man. You see? Let's go from there. We go to Lamentation. What does it say? All right, there's Lamentations 4 and 1. It says, how has the gold become dim? And that gold is speaking of the Israelite men. How has the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. You see? Going back to the top of every street. Where niggas hang, man? You watch these little clips. Where niggas at hanging out, man? At the top of every street, man. When you go, <laughs> where is Jake? Look at it. You see? Just look at the picture, man. All right? How would the gold become dim? You see, because Israelites men, Israelite men, because gold is what? A precious metal, a very precious metal, one of the highest precious metals. And uh, uh, within society, all right, because even when we was in rulership, you know, nations flowed into Solomon, you know, just to hear his wisdom. Why? Because he was, a, he was the most valuable man in the earth at that time. You see, even when other empires are ruling, they will have Israelites 
within their courts because an Israelite man was very valuable, right, when it came to affairs of rulership because what? Israelite men had access to Yahweh by Shema Shah, which opened them up to access to supernatural favor and wisdom. You see, Joseph, the way he can interpret dreams, Daniel, the way he can interpret dreams and, you know, how, how his wisdom. You see, and many more, all right, Israelite men that we don't even know about that, you know, was always in the courts of, you know, nobility, helping run the empires, man. All right, because the Israelite man was a very valuable and sought out, you know, commodity in the earth, man. But now, all right, this is what you got, man. All right. You see? So the scriptures reign supreme again, man. Just to prove that the gold is talking about the men of Israel. It says the precious sons of Zion, com comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pictures, the work of the hands of Potter, man? And what's the, one of the most common terms that you hear thrown around today? Niggas ain't shit. You know? <laughs> you see? You, you know, niggas, like, the nigga energy brings down the vibration of everywhere nigga at, man. All right? Now, all Jake ain't like this, man. You got some Jake that's cool, laid back out the way, you know? But you have a, a a a portion of our people, man, that's that's fully engulfed into this nigga culture, man. You know, and that vibration lowers, I mean, you know, just lowers the frequency wherever it's at, man. All right, like gold raises the frequency where niggas lower the frequency now, man. All right, so I um I end it here. This is Isaiah fifty nine. It says, the way of peace they know. This is Isaiah 59 and 8. It says, the way of peace they know not. All right? And there is no judgment in their goings. Yeah, see, there is no judgment in their goings, which means their actions. All right? You know, if I kill you based on you stepping on my shoe, well... You would never get to wear those shoes again anyway. You see? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, if I kill you, owe some money, well, you going to go to prison and you're going to be begging for money. You see? There's no judgment. <laughs> all right? And there's plenty more, all right, you know, uh, uh, uh idiotic ideologies that our people have that show that what well, there's no judgment in their actions man niggas do very impulsive things man all right and it says they have made them crooked paths where it says whosoever go if they're in shall not no peace man yeah and that's a very you know um uh, traumatic um you know anxiety you know feel lifestyle man you know, you're always beefing with somebody. You know, you your, your children can't even ride in the car with you. Your mama house, you know, is not, not safe. You know, you got instances where Jake got to, you know, I've been in a situation, man. <laughs> you know, we had to put our grandma in the hotel and it's crazy shit, man. You know, I sent her across town somewhere, man. You see? But this, this doesn't make sense, man. All right? There's no peace within their lifestyle. It's very chaotic. And they show you, you know, Jake on the money phone or Jake in the Ferrari, man. But those lifestyles are very chaotic, man. You know, it can go down at any moment. You see? <laughs> that, ain't, that, that ain't living, man. All right? So I just want to put that out there, man. I was just looking at, you know, <laughs> analyzing niggas and... You know, the spirit gave me no precepts. So, Lord will, it was edifying till next time I say, Shalom.